Hello, welcome to Unit 4, Application of Geometry. So our topic today is Vectors versus Scalars. So this is the fourth and final uh, strand or unit in the College Tech course. We are starting with Vectors and Scalars. And what do I want you to be able to do at the end of this video? Uh, I want you to be able to explain the difference between Vectors and Scalars using examples. And then I want you to be able to determine equivalent vectors given a diagram. And that will come after you complete the homework for this section. So. Let's start with a couple of vector concepts, a couple of definitions here. So, what do we know about vectors? Well, vector is a uh, quantity that has both magnitude and direction. Magnitude and direction, so very key there. All right, so when we are talking about a vector, we are talking about something that has a magnitude or a length or a, some, some factor, and then it also points in a particular direction. Its counterpart, scalar, is a quantity, quantity that only has magnitude, magnitude. So some examples with this. So a vector and a scalar. So I'm going to tell you, you're probably, or you are, more familiar with scalars. And you just don't, never called them that before. So here's where you start differentiating between the two. What is a scalar? It's a quantity that only has magnitude. So what is something that only has magnitude? Well, uh, grade 9, you do perimeter. Perimeter is 300 meters, for example. So, i.e., 300 meters. You wouldn't say 300 meters to the left. That wouldn't make any sense. So, there's an example of a scalar value. So, you already know what you already have worked with scalars. I'm just now quantifying, putting them into categories for you. Area. Area is another scalar. You'd say area is 300 square meters. You don't say 300 square meters up or down. You don't give it a direction. Volume, so you start seeing a pattern here. Volume, 300 cubic meters. Okay, not a vector, so not a vector, it only has a magnitude. Distance, okay, so distance, that is a scalar quantity. So, how far is it to Stratford? It is 30 kilometers, obviously not quite accurate. Um, speed, speed is also a scalar. How fast were you going? I was going 100 kilometers an hour. The vectors then. Vector is something that requires direction. So if people have been, that have taken the grade 11 physics, this is going to be, this is going to seem fairly, a lot of review, and it is a lot of review, but for people who didn't take the physics, this is going to be new. So perimeter, area, volume, they don't have counterparts in terms of vectors, but distance does. We call that displacement. So displacement. So how do you get to Stratford? Well, you would go 30 kilometers, and then in square brackets, I would put the direction east. So how do I get to Stratford? You go 30 kilometers east. So it's a more how do you get there answer versus distance is just how far is it. Speed's partner. Speed does have a partner. It's called velocity. So velocity is just speed with a direction, 100 kilometers an hour. Hey, how fast are you going? 100 kilometers an hour. Not very impressive, but if you give a vector, 100 kilometers an hour backwards, well, now that's kind of freaking cool, all right? Because going backwards at 100 kilometers an hour is not something that's overly common, all right? Acceleration, okay, acceleration due to Earth's gravity. When you press down on the accelerator in a car, you're accelerating, so you need to d indicate which direction. So five kilometers per hour squared, forward. All right. So those are measurements of vectors. They have both the two necessary components here. We have a magnitude and we have a direction. Whereas over on the other side, you have magnitude only. All right. So you got to ask yourself, is a direction important here? If the answer is yes, then you are dealing with a vector. Vector notation. All right. Let's talk about a couple of the vector notations that exist out there. A vector, if I want to draw a picture of a vector, it is a line looks like this, 
and it has several key or very important components. Where we started, where we put the dot, we call that the tail of the vector. At the arrowhead end of it, we call it the head of the vector. And then the length of the vector, how long we draw the vector, is our magnitude. Magnitude. And it gives us a direction, because an arrowhead will give us direction. So we know it's pointing in that direction. And it's a measurable direction, because we could draw in an x-axis here and measure an angle. All right. So those, that's the pictorial, the geometric representation of a vector. So the geometric representation of a vector is the arrow. You don't have to mark tail, head, and magnitude. That's just for your terminology. What happens if you want to write up a therefore statement? Well, we can call or name this vector algebraically, and we could call it the u vector. Okay? Components here is the name or variable we're going to use. And that harpoon that's on top, all right. You can draw it as an arrow over top. I just do the half arrow. That is your vector notation. That tells me that u is a vector. So that means that I'm dealing with something that has both magnitude and direction. Uh, a couple of other ways you could show it. If the vector here on the left, our geometric one, let's say we, we said it started at point A, it ended at point B, you could say the vector AB where you have the tail and the head named. So you could do it that way. And some of the older textbooks, because technology was a little bit uh, not as efficient back in the good old days, if it's bold-faced, so if I did this and colored it in, so bold face also indicates a vector. Now, technology has improved immensely, so it's not nearly as tough uh, for us to use the harpoon on top. It becomes a lot easier with the software nowadays. But bold face also indicates vector. Now, I don't use this one all the way through the notes. The homework doesn't use it. Uh, and you're not probably going to use it because it is an absolute hassle to have to make bold face letters like that. So those are the three, we'll call it algebraic notations. So I'll put that as a header here. So algebraic notation. So if you want to write a therefore statement, you would pick one of those three forms. And over here is our geometric. And again, anything that's in green is not required when you're drawing the vector. Now the problem with geometric, though, we're going to talk about this in a later video. So you've got to be kind of accurate when you're drawing it up. Angles between vectors, if they tell you that uh, the angle between the vector is 13 or 14 degrees or whatever, this means that the two vectors were placed tail to tail. All right? So you'd have vector 1 and vector 2. Didn't do a very good job. Put the tails on top of each other. So it has to be tail to tail. So that's the angle they're referencing. So when given an angle, when given an angle between vectors, between vectors, the vectors must be arranged tail to tail. Tail to tail. Okay? So whenever they reference or make reference to that vector, or the angle between vectors, they're tail to tail, and that's how you can envision them. Scalar multiplication, you're going to be extremely happy to know that um, any of the rules, algebraic rules that you've learned up to this point in time um, still work or are equally important. Uh, so scalar multiplication, a couple ways we can do this. Let's start with the geometric version here. So if you want to draw a couple of arrows, try to make that one twice as big. And I'm going to go like that. So I'm going to name these vectors so it's a little bit easier. So vector u, v, and w. And those are usually, if you have two vectors, it's usually u and v. If you have three vectors, it's u, v, and w. So there we go. We start doing a comparison. I'm going to give you some measurements. Like I said, you can, uh, however you've drawn it, but I'm going to keep it simple. And here we are. So the scalar multiplication, what you can do is you can take a vector and you can stretch it or compress it. So that means that I could say that vector v 
is equal to two vector u's. All right. Whoops. Except I should write in two vector u's when I say that. It's equal to two vector u's. And the reason for that, follow me through on this one, if I was to clone that one. So vector u points in the same direction as v, and it would take me two of them to give me one, of, one v. All right. So I'm adding them together. So I'm making it twice as big. Okay. So that's how that would work. All right. If I wanted to write it in terms of u, the u vector, in terms of v, well, u is half the size of v. It's still in the same direction. So we would say one half v. All right. Now, when we want to talk about w, let's start with the u vector equal to w. So what is the only difference between u and w? Well, it's pointing in a different direction. So if you want to change the direction of a vector, you simply make it negative. All right, so it becomes negative w. So this is for 2D vectors. All right, same thing here. w is equal to, in terms of v, we know that v is twice as big as w, so it's going to be a, or sorry, w is actually half the size of v. So I'm going to put a 1 half in front. So I've got to shrink v in half. And it's also facing in the opposite direction. So if it's facing the opposite direction, I do have to add a negative in here. So those scalars, those numbers that are appearing in front of the vectors are what we call scalar values. So those are scalar values. And they can change. They can change. the magnitude and direction of a vector. Magnitude and direction of a vector. All right, so there we go. So there are our scalar values. Now the zero vector, special case here, so our zero vector, uh, how do you write it algebraically? You put the number zero with the vector notation on top, and I can do a better job than that. So there's your zero vector. So that's the algebraic notation. And geometrically, it would appear as a dot. So that's geometric. So geometric means draw a picture. And it would simply be a dot. All right, now the zero vector, the zero vector has a magnitude of zero, so zero units long, and can point in any direction. So if we want it to point left, it's pointing left. If it's pointing, we want it to point right, it will point right. All right. So there's some of the terminology. I have a couple of examples then I want to go through, starting to get you used to or comfortable with it. Like I said, if you've already taken physics before, this is going to go along real nice. For those that haven't, uh, the note is geared toward you. So if you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll answer them as soon as I can.